Praise the Lord, brethren. This evening, we are not going to spend so much time in discussion because we want to have a personal time with God. We want to take to God some pertinent personal issues. You want to table before God um, the issues that are facing you, especially as touching your spiritual walk with God. One of the benefits that Jesus came to give us was intimacy with God, where we could enter and lock ourselves up and have a discussion with God. Sometimes that discussion, we, we do it practically. And what I want to advise us to do tonight is to go practical with God tonight. And you know, that, that sort of things happen when you give God a chair. You clear a chair, put it in front of you, and you decide to, either you sit opposite him, but what I used to do many times is I sit at the bottom, I sit on the floor by the chair, and I offer the chair to God and say, God, come and sit down. I want to talk. I just want to bear my mind. I want to have a discussion. And I'm going to discuss with him as if I'm with a disciplined favorite uncle. You know, a disciplinarian favorite father. So I can misbehave in his presence, but I am free to talk to him because I know he loves me so much. So tonight we want to sit with God and have a personal, intimate discussion with him. It's not time to come religious and be saying fine words. You know, Father, you are great. You are greater than the greatest. You are higher than the highest. You are the love of my life. You are the benevolent and the merciful and the gracious and the... It's not time for that. It's time to come raw. Time to open up and discuss with God simply as a person. As if he is your father because he is actually your father. He is actually your spiritual father. He is the only father you have aside for your physical father. So you want to sit with him and have a discussion with him. Even this, many times the so-called uh, fathers in the Lord and mothers in the Lord, are, we don't have this opportunity. Whereas God has given us this opportunity to sit with him. And that's what we want to do tonight. Because when Jesus was teaching us how to pray, he said we can call him our father. There is no relationship as close as that. You know, when you get married to your husband or to your wife, you have this, um, you are close to them, but when you go back to your father, and he's a favorite father, a father who takes care of you, who is always there for you, you are able to, some of, you know, some of us uh, ladies, before you got too old, you still go and sit on your father's leg, or you put your head on his laps, and you know, you talk, you, 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 you get intimate discussion with him. Things you are not going to discuss with every other body, a person. You sit with your mother. You lock yourself in the room and you keep talking, talking to yourselves. And you keep pouring out your heart. And you notice that when you get out of there, you are a bit freer. You are a bit lighter. That's what we want to do with God tonight. It's a night where we have our personal, intimate discussions with God. And you know, relationship with God goes deeper, the more intimate moments you spend with him. And your, your going to heaven becomes better, clearer, and closer the, the more you have this intimacy with God. I will give us um, like two examples that I have. Number one, I, there was a time I, I wasn't praying like before. I, my days were too busy and I was just, so by the time I usually go for my prayers when everybody has slept, so I'll go for it. Where I live, I can go for prayer walks, even when the kidnappers and some other funny, funny elements were working, I was still able to go for my prayer walks. So I used to go for my prayer walks in the night, but after a while I was, I got too busy and I got so tired easily. I could not go for prayer work. So I was sleeping. I would just, after the day, I just sleep off. Do you know that God went to report me to my wife? Tell your husband, I'm missing him. He has not come for the prayers. Uh, he's not, I'm not seeing him. 
That is the intimacy we have. That is the kind of relationship we can have with God. Where we have to go and report us to somebody close and say, I'm, this person is not, he's no more talking to me. You know, immediately you start committing that sin or falling into that iniquity. He will start speaking immediately. He will start speaking immediately. I remember the day I was, I was, I was standing and a jeep passed. I said, jeep I bought for my wife before. A Volkswagen Touareg, and um, it passed. So I was like, "Hmm, fine car. I wish I could buy this car for my wife again." Immediately, the Holy Spirit answered me, mm-hmm. "So you are not even cured. <laughs> so you are still this worldly. You are still you are still seeing cars and admiring them. Am I not the one that will provide you any car? I feel like providing for you. Is it your duty to be?" I, I said, "Ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not admiring it again." See. That's the kind of intimacy you can have with him where he will not even allow you to go scot free. You are still planning, you've not entered the iniquity, you are just still at the fair fair, and you started hearing him condemning you and telling you what you have done is wrong. <laughs> so that helps you not to even fall to it at all. So I didn't even have time to start thinking and start planning of okay, how will I buy it before I now enter iniquity. Of diverting money that is not meant for a car, for to go and buy a car. You see, he has stepped in immediately. That's the kind of relationship that God wants us to have. Of recent, um, I my tire got spot. Though I was even surprised that the tire was still was still okay. It was it has torn, and yet the car was still moving. The car, tire was still moving. I was surprised. So I changed the tire. I put the extra tire there. I was now concerned that I don't have extra tire because this tire is bad. And, you know, in that process, throughout that day, I did not take it to God in prayers. I just was thinking about it. that ah, And the money I have with me is not even enough to buy tire. I had other expenses to be spent and I have tire to buy. So which one do I do now? Which one is, do I do the expenses or do I buy the tire? I was bothered about that. And I did not, I went into all that thing that day. I did not take it to God in prayers. But then, that night, I slept. And the next thing I discovered was that in my dream, I had a revelation. I was in court. And my offense was fraud. I have committed fraud. And um, the the judge was not too happy with me that I've committed fraud. Somebody actually, some people actually were the accusers accusing me of committing fraud. But the judge now said he will have mercy. He will have mercy. I should go and correct my ways. So by the time I woke up, I was like, I should go and correct my ways. What have I done? Have I collected money from anybody that I shouldn't collect money from? Nobody has paid money or recent to me now, sort of. The ones that you sent for a specific purpose, we asked, I asked you, I asked you, I asked you, you confirmed. It took, it took like a week. I kept asking, should I collect it? Should I collect it? And you, you kept saying yes. And I had to check, um, is it me that wants it or you that wanted me to collect it? And things like that. And I, I used it for exactly what you asked us to use it for. So what have I done that makes me a fraudulent person? Before the Holy Spirit now reminded me, do you remember yesterday you were bothered about tire? And you were thinking of how to divert money for something else for tire. Brethren, I wasn't diverting money of the church for tire. We don't even have a church. I wasn't diverting money of the Holy Spirit prayer house for tire. Holy Spirit prayer doesn't even have money. So, what? I had... I now discovered, it was later recently explained to me that are you the owner of your life? So the expenses I asked you to undertake for yourself over this other matter, why are you trying to divert it to go and spend it on buying tire? Is that not fraud? Are you the owner of the money? Are you the owner of the life? Are you the owner of the tire? Are you the owner of the car? So why are you thinking of diverting the money? For another thing. Why? <laughs> that alone, I was accused of a fraud. Brethren, that is how intimate we can be with God. That is how God can, can come hard on you even before you commit the sin. 
the things we don't even consider as sin that are iniquities we can't you know it is not don't touch your neighbor don't kill somebody don't do violence no 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 just thinking of spending the money on something that he has not approved or not discussing his money with him you know and i will be playing with us that money he has told me that okay you are using this money to buy groceries for the house so i was now thinking of cutting the groceries and buying tire <laughs> and that's what he accused me of fraud immediately that i was a fraudulent person because he wants to feed me with that money he's not buying tire when it's time to buy tire he will buy tire but then you'll be surprised by the time he now led me to go to where i kept money to count the money for the uh, groceries I was to buy because I kept the money somewhere. By the time I would count the whole money, I discovered that inside the mo- uh, money was more than what I thought it was. So the money there was able to buy a tire and take care of the groceries. So God has even prepared for the tire ahead, but I did not know. I only had um, a little view. I didn't know that that amount of money in my hand. I didn't know. <laughs> I, I didn't count it so much to know that that was the amount of money. So it was exactly the money that would take care of the groceries and would take care of the tire. But because in my mind, throughout the day, I was thinking that I'm going to cut the groceries. I will not buy exactly what I'm supposed to buy so that I can buy a tire because I can't be driving a car around without a tire. I was thinking about myself. I was trying to take care of myself without going to meet my savior. And immediately that night, I was called a fraudulent person. So tonight, we are going to have that discussion, an intimate discussion with God. And we're going to ask him to take us to the intimacy level, where he talks to us like a favorite child, who he doesn't want to make any mistake. We're going to have discussions with him one-on-one tonight. And that's all we are doing tonight. I'm not going to send any prayer points. It is you and God. How high do you want to go with him? Probably will start from you going to him and saying, the way I'm looking at it, I'm not yet a Christian. And that's, honestly, this is how I pray to God. When I look at my life sometimes, I tell God, I don't think I'm a Christian. I just don't think I'm a Christian. Because, <laughs> ah, God, I will, start, I will start speaking to him my heart. I will start opening up my heart to him. I will just speak plainly to him. When you hear my discussions, you will think somebody is sitting down with me. Sometimes you wonder, is it God you are talking to like that? I said, but I'm talking to my father this time around. He asked me to call him a father, and I've come to him as a son. So, are you at that level of intimacy where God is so jealous about his life in your life? That he doesn't even want you to tamper with his own life. Can we go to God in prayer and ask him, take us to that level of intimacy? Pull us closer to yourself. Let us have that relationship where you will not even allow us to go astray. When we are planning to go astray, you will hit us. I'm not saying I'm not going astray. Because there are some times when you will speak and we are stubborn. And we will make up our mind and go ahead. And that's when you wait for us and you tell me later that I'm going to punish you. You know, that kind of intimacy that even when I commit iniquity with him, he will tell me I'm going to punish you. And many times he will punish you. And that I know that, okay, that iniquity and that sin is no more waiting for me on judgment day. I have paid the price. Uh, he has forgiven me. I have been reprimanded already. I have been forgiven, reprimanded, and um, it is helping me not to go back to such a sin again. That kind of relationship is what we want. But then, even me that I'm talking to, I'm not yet there. I'm not yet there. <laughs> I read about the people in the Bible and I say, I want to have this kind of relationship with God. I want to have this kind of intimacy with God. I want to, I don't, I want Him to be there always with me. That is the, that, I don't want to commit any sin and iniquity. I want to be perfect before Him. And that is what we are taking to God in prayers tonight. And after we have settled this matter, we now raise all the issues we have. The people that hurt us, the pains, the things that are troubling us, the matter you've been, you've been thinking about. Where God probably would have shown you a revelation and, and accused you of fraud. If you were that close to him, take those matters to him. Settle those matters with God tonight. And I pray that he will draw you close to himself. 
And as you settle this matter, heaven will open, especially for those of us that will go on our knees or lie flat before him and surrender our life to Jesus Christ afresh. Brethren, I am a serial life giver. That I surrender my life yesterday, telling me I won't do it today again. Once I discover that this thing in my life, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I am back on my knees begging God and giving my life. I, let somebody accuse me of giving my life always. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Almost every time I go for MLR at Buku, every time they call the altar call, I'm always crying to the altar. You, so I think some people, I, I don't sit in the same place. I sit in different places. Unless people would have noted that. What's the problem with this brother? Always crying to the altar every day. What's your problem? The one you gave yesterday is not enough. But once I discovered that, ah, in this aspect, how can somebody be this close to God and I'm not? I'm going to the altar. <laughs> I'm going to surrender my life. I remember the day we preached and the whole church came out. But before even any member of the church got to the altar, me that was preaching, I had gotten down from the altar and come to the floor and moved to the altar myself to give my life to Jesus Christ. I was the one that preached the message. I was the first to go out for altar call. Whatever it's going to take me, I'm going to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. So, brethren, tonight is a night between you and God. Can I challenge you to spend quality time with God tonight? Quality moment with God tonight. And I pray that God will answer your prayers in Jesus' name. And He will give you responses. Even if you cannot hear Him very clearly, He will come via revelations. He will come via speaking to you. And I decree into your life that the patience to wait upon God, God will give to you in Jesus' name. And we beg by mercy that God will even begin to speak to your inner man. Your heart will begin to receive information. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So please, brethren, go into your prayers now.